ready when you are. All right. Got it. All right, I'm gonna start um, sharing my screen, which is um, shockingly difficult sometimes for me. So hopefully um, people are seeing my screen and I'll get my slideshow started. If someone can tell me if my slides are up. They are up and they look great. great. Thanks. Okay, I wanna give you just start with um, a little bit of um, who I am and, and where some of the stuff I'm gonna be talking about today um, comes from. Um, I work at the Buckeye Ranch. I've been here for almost 22 years. And in my current role, um, I'm the director of our professional and clinical development department or, or program. We're really looking at how do we develop all of our team members, all of our employees at the Buckeye Ranch to be competent professionals and to be the kind of professionals they choose to be. But over the years at the Buckeye Ranch, I've had multiple different roles and most of my work has been clinical. And so I was a clinician, I was a clinical supervisor, and for, I've worked with interns, particularly graduate school interns for many years, especially around intensive training around family therapy. And um, then I headed up and implemented our trauma-informed care model um, for several years. Over the last several years, and I don't know enough about that, you know, who all is who all is participating in this um, forum to know exactly how many of you are in leadership roles in an organization. But I think it's not any big surprise to anyone, no matter what your role is in the organization, that over the last several years, we have had an increasingly acute crisis around our workforce. Um, we saw it happening before the pandemic hit and it was exacerbated with the pandemic. And it's raised to the surface what I think to be underlying problems that we've had for a long time. But they have become so acute with our current crisis that they can't be ignored. And so what I'm going to be sharing about is a, just a little bit about our journey as an organization, our recent journey around this topic. Um, some of it intentional, some of it just looking back and saying, okay, this is, is what happened. And where I see us going as an organization to try to make some meaningful changes in the challenges we have around our workforce. And so I hope that it's relevant. The other thing that I want to say is um, I spent some time going over, looking at, at the website for Project ECHO and looking at some of the content that you've had previously. So I hope that some of the things I talk about, I'm just going to allude to and hope that there's enough understanding about what is meant due to some of the previous trainings that you've had that it'll make sense. Um, I wanna talk about where we were in um, 2020 as an organization, again, to give some context to where um, I'm going with this. And the two things were happening simultaneously and some, somewhat separately at that time. The first thing I wanna talk about was that in 2020, we developed a new strategic plan. And what was critical, what was important about this that is relevant to this is we had a new, we have a new CEO. This was the first time that um, she was with us in developing a strategic plan. And she approached it very different than what we have previously done. Um, our previous process for strategic plans was less than stellar. And I will just leave it at that. When Vicki came in, she was very intentional about making sure that voices of um, not just our executive team were present in the, in the developing of our strategic plan, but that we pulled in directors, managers, and supervisors in our agency to be very much involved in looking at um, doing our SWOT analysis, which is looking at the strengths and weaknesses and 
um, opportunities and challenges around our organization and having more of a voice than um, they have previously had in developing our strategic plan. And that's important for this because what emerged from that strategic plan were five strategic priorities. I'm not going to get into that, but I will say that one of those strategic priorities was workforce. Because at that point, pre-pandemic, we were really re um, experiencing a kind of turnover and retention problem that we had not had historically at this agency. Simultaneous to that, on my side, um, we have over the years had principles of quality care that we have used as sort of a um, way of thinking around how we provide the care we provide to our clients. We have multiple programs um, at the Buckeye Ranch and we have a child welfare line of service. We have mental health services. And um, what we needed to do as we grew as an organization was to have a shared approach to how we worked with children and families that was consistent across the organization. Um, many of these principles were evidenced more clearly in some of our clinical programs. We wanted to be sure that families that came to the Buckeye Ranch had a similar experience in terms of our underlying beliefs and how we treat families. And so part of my role was embedding those um, principles. And what those principles are, are taking a strength-based approach, being family-centered, trauma-informed, and culturally responsive. And so for the purposes of this presentation today, what I wanna talk about is um, how we have worked to embed those principles and how that links to some um, changes that we've had in thinking about how we work with our staff. So as we um, looked at how we take these principles and how we embed them in every part of our agency, there were some things that we did. Again, as I look back on this, it wasn't that we, we set out to have this strategic plan to do them. When I think back historically, this is sort of how it happened. And it started with teaching our team members how to work with our clients consistent with these principles. For many years, we've introduced them in our orientation. Um, currently, we've changed our orientation program so that we spend one full day with all of our new hires. Um, just talking about these principles and, and what they look like and how we how they are the foundation of how we think about working with children, youth, and families. Um, the second thing we did is we've used them again for, for several years as a lens in adopting models. So when we look at different interventions or different models that might be proposed in a given program, um, for example, DBT, we start with looking at, is this model consistent with taking a strength-based approach? Is it, if it's something that's very deficit modeled, we're not gonna be comfortable with it. Does this model prioritize families? We know that children are best served in families and that if we expect to have durable change, we need to be working with the entire family. And so does this model honor that? The, the next thing that we did was, and this is fairly recently, is embed these principles in um, our agency policy and our culture. So for many years, we talked about them in orientation. We did trainings on them. But it was more um, me talking about it, several folks talking about it, um, putting it in trainings. And in the last couple of years, we've added them to our policies. We've um, really embedded them. We've encoded them in agency policy. We have um, 
made them part of our signage that we do. We've made them part of um, how we talk about the Buckeye Ranch in public facing documents, really encoding them as something more than just um, something we train on, but really a huge part of how we think about what we do at the Buckeye Ranch. And then more recently, we realized if we're going to have these principles as something that we expect our workers to do when they work with children, youth, and families, we need to think about how these principles might also shape how we treat our team members. So if we're expecting our team members to use a strength-based approach in working with their families, we need to think about are we using a strength-based approach in how we work with our team members? And how do we go about doing that? So over the last couple of years, we've really been intentional at, look, at looking at that. But over the last year in particular, um, as we've had some reorganizations, our, our professional development department is relatively new for the agency, and it's allowed us to have some resources to really focus on professional development and have a more strategic approach. As um, our team began really thinking about what this means, we sort of recognized that there's a bit of a disconnect in how we have approached this. And this is where I think it gets to the core when I talk about flipping the script gets to the core of what I would say we have been doing wrong as an organization and what we need to do differently. And it's based on some things that we know. I don't think I'm your, I'm not your um, authorized. I'm sorry. You're good now, Pam, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry, I thought it's, Okay, I'm sorry. So back to the disconnect, thank you. Um, we realized there were some things, as I pull together what we know to be true about trauma-informed care, what we know to be true about working with families, what we know to be true about a strength-based perspective. Those things we know to be true are also true for our staff because we all share human brains. And we recognized that we've been approaching this in the wrong way. So going back to sort of the evolution of the things we've learned, what we know to be true about treating children is that we have to include parents and caregivers. We know that. What we also have learned over the years of doing a lot of family work is that we have to start with building relationships with parents. It's not just that we include parents and caregivers. That has to be our starting point, not our add-on as we work with children. And one of the things I've, I've noticed over the years, especially doing a lot of work with interns, a lot of work with new employees, a lot of clinical training, is we get folks who come into this work and they do this because they care about children and they want to work with children, not so much with adults. And so helping people recognize that if you're going to work with children at the Buckeye Ranch, you have to be able to build relationships with parents. And most of those parents you're going to work with have trauma histories. And you have to look at your starting point differently. We've also learned in working with high acuity families that safety is the treatment. Bobby, I watched your presentation from this because I wanted to make sure I understood how this whole Project ECHO thing worked. And so I pulled a quote from you, a calm nervous system invites a calm nervous system. We know from mm -hmm. polyvagal theory, we know from everything we know about social neuroscience that safety is the treatment. That a calm nervous system invites a calm nervous system and we have to start with our team members providing care to families. This is where we've gotten it wrong. Our starting point has been wrong. What we know about being true about 
what we know to be true about managing the human stress response is it doesn't begin in the cortex. Our stress response is managed at a very different place in our brain than in the cortex. So when we start by saying, we're going to teach you how to do this before we have helped you build the skills of having a calm stress response, it's not going to work. We know that with our clients, we need to figure that out with our staff. We expected our team members to be able to learn how to apply these principles before they experience them within the culture of the organization. This was a big aha moment um, for me. Um, we have to move away from this, from teaching our team members and then expecting them to use it to starting by applying the principles to our team members. That has to be our starting point. And it hasn't been. And I will tell you that, um, you know, one of the things I didn't mention at the beginning, this is a journey. Um, we are not there yet. We have a long way to go, but I think we are beginning at a leadership level at this organization to recognize we have to change our priorities. We have to think different about where we start. If we cannot support our team members and help them be able to have a calm central nervous system and feel safe in our organization, we cannot expect them to do that with the clients that they serve. So in a minute, we're going to switch, hopefully successfully, to a, um, a very small snippet of a, um, of a TED talk that I want to share with you. As I've been thinking about this and, and working on it and figuring out how to communicate this idea of changing our starting point, um, I was doing a lot of um, looking for ways to articulate it. And in the process, I came across the work of a gentleman named Vineet Nayar. And definitely in a world that I wasn't starting, that, that wasn't my place, my initial starting point to look. This gentleman who you're gonna hear in this TED talk was the CEO of the largest IT company in India. And what he's gonna talk about are some significant changes they made in their um, corporation. And the reason they made these changes was because they were losing market share. They were doing fine. They, they were a multi-billion dollar company, but they noticed that they were no longer first in market share. They were second and third, and they saw themselves slipping back um, over and against their competitors. And so they made some significant changes in their organization for the purpose of increasing market share. As you watch this, um, I want you to think about, and, and I, I hope that there's time and, and that there can be some discussion elicited around this. I, I want you to think about when he talks about, um, he's gonna talk about the unique experience that um, they give to their customers. I want you to think about what does that mean in our work? because I think that the work we do is much more important than market share. The other thing I wanna share with you, cause it is in the middle of this, um, he starts out talking about how they began to look at how they do things on the how, on the why, ac excuse me, on the how axis rather than the what axis. And what he means by that is as they looked at changes they needed to make, they realized they didn't need to make changes in their product, the what. They needed to make changes in how they deliver that product. And so that's what he means at the very beginning when he talks about the how axis rather than the why axis. So um, if we can pull up the video right now, it's not even two minutes. So it goes by really quickly, but hopefully, um, you can be thinking about this as it applies to your organization and then we'll come back. People get it. Our journey of thinking about innovation on the how axis rather than what axis started with three fundamental questions. The first, 
what is the business we are in and our answer we are in the business of creating unique experiences unique value for our customers and the more unique we are the higher market share we will create second question where does this unique experience unique value get created and who creates this unique experience and unique value answer it gets created where our customers and our employees meet in that interface we call the value zone and our employees in that value zone create that unique experience that's the third question if our employees are the unique value or are creating the unique value which helps us grow faster then what should the role of managers and management in any company be and the obvious answer for us was nothing but enthusing encouraging enabling those employees to create the unique experience so that we can grow faster what is not obvious about that and that is how employees first customer second was born where the management is in the business of enthusing encouraging enabling people and employees are in the business of customers first perfect so are are, are we back on me sharing We yes. are Pamela and okay. we just have a few minutes left okay. so that we can still get to our case presentation. All right, I'm just gonna share this last slide. Um, I I want you to think about how, well, Fiddle, it didn't, I'm gonna go ahead and, and just stop. Is there, the thing I wanna share with this is we have to think about not do unto others as we would have others do unto you, but do unto others as you would have others do unto others. That is sort of our mantra these days about um, how we think about how we need to treat our staff. So if there's um, no time for discussion. <laughs> there usually isn't, that's not a I know. problem. I know. Thank you, Pam.